There's a beautiful study that was published in the Journal of Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. So this is peer reviewed work showing that if you take two groups of people, you inject them both with E. coli, a bacteria which makes you very, very sick. But one group does a simple meditation and another group does breathing of the sort that I'll describe in a moment. What it involves is hyper oxygenating the system so that you release adrenaline from the adrenal glands, which, ride, which sit right about your kidneys. And adrenaline is the trigger for a number of different immune system uh, cell types to combat infection. And what they found was if people do a particular style of breathing prior to the injection of E. coli, they are able to greatly avoid fever. They reduce the amount of inflammatory cytokines, things like IL-6, interleukin-6, etc., and increase anti-inflammatory cytokines mm. like interleukin-10. It's a really wonderful study. The pattern of breathing is really simple. I do it anytime I'm starting to feel a little worn out really? or like I might be catching something or if I was on a plane and someone around me seemed like they weren't doing so well or I just am feeling a little worn out. And uh, forgive me because there's no other way to do it but just to do it, but it involves 25 deep breaths in through the nose, in this case, out through the mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a case where breathing through the mouth is appropriate. So in through the nose, out through the mouth. Then at the end of that, exhaling all your air, holding your breath for 15 to 60 seconds. Don't fight the impulse to breathe when you feel the impulse to mm -hmm. breathe. Breathe in and then hold your breath for as long as you can until you feel the impulse to breathe. But it basically, I won't do the all 25, but it's, it goes something like this. So big, deep breaths, right? And I can already feel I'm kind of heating up. Yeah. That's the release of adrenaline. A little tingly feeling. You're hyper-oxygenating, you're releasing adrenaline. Adrenaline is the signal for the immune system to deploy these killer cells and these cells that go and combat infection. And we don't often think about the fact that stress actually is the go signal for the immune system. We always hear stress depletes your immune system. And that's true if you remain chronically stressed but humans are phenomenally good at combating stressors. And then they stop, they relax, and boom, they get sick because the adrenaline signal drops. The other way you could do this would be to do an, an ice bath or really cold shower. You uh -huh. get the adrenaline release. That's basically the effect of the ice bath or cold need. shower. It's the adrenaline release. Some people will do well by doing a short HIIT workout, you know, a hit high intensity mm -hmm. interval training workout, because again, it's adrenaline, so it's not a depleting workout, but you know, 12 minutes of, of sprint, walk, sprint, walk. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is something that I occasionally do if I'm traveling or mm -hmm. I'm just feeling kind of worn down. I'll do it. I'll do maybe two or three rounds of what I just described. Mm -hmm. And it's, it all boils down to adrenaline release. Really? That bolus, as we call it, a shot of adrenaline to your system signals the immune system to turn on and to defend to combat, itself, to defend itself. Getting sick. That's right. And this is why uh, people who have ever taken care of a sick child or a sick relative, you can go, go, go. You don't eat, you don't sleep. There's no, we, you know, no self care and you're not getting sick. Now, of course, if you're exposed to enough viral load or you're exposed to enough of a bacteria, you know, it might get you. But this mm -hmm. is the sort of thing I would do if I was feeling a little bit of a throat tickle, a little rundown. But then I would also do the, the shower, make sure you get some decent food and yes. get a good, good, good sleep. Night's sleep. When you learn something, whether or not it's a physical skill or you're learning a language, let's say you're working on uh, sentences in, in Spanish, because you're, mm -hmm. you're learning Spanish as, as we know, and you're really drilling it hard, harder, you're, you're working at it. Turns out that if you stop randomly every once in a while and take 10 seconds and just do nothing, mm. the brain, this has been now demonstrated by brain imaging, the brain, runs many repetitions inside of that little rest block of the material that you were trying to learn. And the speed of learning and the depth of learning is much faster. So these gap effects have been shown for physical skill learning, language learning, math learning, music, etc. And this is the same process that happens during sleep. So normally you learn something during the day, you try and learn, you go to sleep, and during sleep, there's a rapid replay of the information. Right. And that's when so-called neuroplasticity rewiring of connections occurs. These little gaps that you're doing, that you're inserting at random, not every three minutes or so, but just at random, taking these 10 second 10 gaps, seconds, yeah. give you many more repetitions. So it's, it's, it's huh. if ever there was a little, uh, 
what is it, like a cheat code? Is that what they yeah, call it in yeah, video yeah. games? I don't play video games. But <laughs> a cheat code, it's this, that every once in a while you just stop and do nothing. You don't have to close your eyes. And you're getting more repetitions, and then you go back into it. So some people like to do that. And then we're about done with the morning, but I, I'd be remiss if I didn't um, say that I always, after lunch, do a 10 to 30 minute either non-sleep deep rest or hypnosis. What does that do for you? Well, what it does is it, at least what the data show, because there have now been two studies published last year, one in Cell Reports, and I believe the other was also in Cell Reports, Cell Press Journal, excellent journal, showing that 20 minute naps or things of the sort that I just described, the hypnosis I described, allow the neural plasticity that was triggered during that learning bout mm. to occur much more quickly and so people learn faster. Interesting. Yeah. So you're, and for some people, a nap isn't a feasible thing. Uh, some people say, are naps good or bad? If your nap interferes with your nighttime sleep, it's bad. bad. If your nap does not, then it's okay. And naps that are shorter than 90 minutes, so anywhere from 10, 20, 30, 45, but certainly not longer than 90 minutes, are going to be better than naps that are longer than 90 minutes for reasons related to sleep. So that kind of ends the morning. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the day just depends on what's happening. Sure. And I think it, it's too varied yeah. to describe. But I do suggest that people try and get a little bit of sunlight as the sun is setting in the evening or late afternoon, depending on time of year and where you live. Same practice, because mm -hmm. now you're sending two signals to that master circadian clock of when there's morning and when there's evening. And that clock has a, what we call a morning and an evening oscillator. So if you can give more signals, then the system becomes more robust. It also ensures you a little bit against some of the exposure to nighttime bright light for reasons mm. related to retinal sensitivity. So go outside for 10 or 15 minutes, check fine if you need to check your tech message, text messages, do it out front of the, your building or right. your home. That's going to be very good. We need serotonin. Absolutely. To feel more, what, complete, whole? Safe. Safe. Once you feel, this is where people, you know, I think that the go-getters get it wrong, mm. <laughs> no pun intended, where getting after it and being hard driving is really important. But, you know, we've all seen examples of this. I've seen a number of these in Silicon Valley friends that did very well in tech, get to the point where they reach that finish line and then they don't have a whole lot or a whole lot of people to share that with and they end up very isolated and depressed. And then they go through this whole cycle of yeah. trying to find themselves. And um, you need to balance serotonin and dopamine, maybe across the day, maybe across the week. You know, I think in religious practices, um, all religions really, there's a kind of Sabbath, there's a rest period, you know, for many, many, or I think all of them. Um, that makes sense because there needs to be a renewal. 